G'day, welcome back to McGrathematics. Here we are kicking off with a 2016 HSC question. We've got a circle with radius of five and an arc length of seven. The question is, which one of these four is the area of the shaded sector? As always, hit pause and see which one you would be choosing in 2016. Okay, so to find the area of a sector, we should probably use the area of a sector formula, which is R, A equals half R squared theta, where theta is in radians. Okay, so we have a radius, we don't have an angle. However, what we do have is an arc length. So we could use the arc length formula, L equals R theta. We can rearrange this to get theta to find our area. So we're gonna set arc length equal to five. We'll set radius equal to five. Now, if we divide both sides by five, we get that the angle theta is seven over five radians. Now we have a value we can substitute into our area formula and do area equals half times five squared times seven fifths, gets us an answer of 35 over two. So well done if you chose option A as your pick. Okay, for today's video, we are looking at our final lesson in the sequence and series topic. Today's heading is limiting sum. To start off this lesson, I'm going to ask you a question, a hypothetical question that uh, stumped the greatest mathematical minds on earth over 2000 years ago. See if you can figure it out. The question is, is it possible to sum together an infinite amount of positive numbers and obtain a finite result? Or in English, can you add together an, an infinite amount of numbers, positive numbers, okay, and get an answer that is not infinity? What do you think? When I first heard this question, I thought surely if you're adding together an infinite amount of something, the answer should be infinity. But the answer to this question is actually yes, it is possible to add together infinite terms and get an answer that is a finite number. And here I'll prove it to you. Let's think about the geometric series, uh, one plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus etc. So each time the next term is going to be half of the term before it. And I want you to think about what this number is going to add to. Well, let's have a look at a diagram. Here is one, here is plus a half, plus a quarter, and then plus an eighth. What you hopefully should be seeing is that each time we add something, there is still going to be a little bit of this circle left because we are only adding in a half of what is left over. So each time this remaining gap is gonna cut in half, but there should still always be something missing from this circle. Okay, so hopefully it's clear to you that the total sum of these two shapes is never going to be more than two circles. So we say that if we kept adding this geometric series for the rest of our lives for infinity, we should never get a result that is more than two. And if you're really bored, you can grab your calculator and try and disprove this. But this is the limiting sum of this geometric series. It will never be greater than a value of two. Okay, so uh, the formula that we're going to use to calculate the limiting sum of a geometric series today is um, sum is equal to a over one minus r. So A is equal to the starting value and R is equal to your common ratio or your common multiplier. Now, very important that a geometric series will only have a limiting sum. So it'll only have a number that it approaches if the thing that you're multiplying by is less than one or between one and minus one. What that means is your terms aren't getting larger, okay? In the last example, each term was half the size of the term before it. That's why we were shrinking to some finite value if you're multiplying by greater than one or by less than negative one, it means you're making your terms larger and your series is not going to approach some value. It's going to approach infinity or negative infinity. Okay, so only if your terms are getting smaller will you have a limiting sum. This expression is of course on our formula sheet. You just need to know how to use it and when to use it. Okay, so as we saw before, the value that we get from this formula is the value that the series will never grow larger than or never grow equal to. The reason this works is because we look at our infinite um, sum of a geometric series from our formula from the last video. Now, if R is less than one, let's say R was a half, for example, if you did a half to the power of a very large number, say for example, a half to the power of 10, well, a half to the power of 10 is like one over 1024. So as this value of N grows very large, the value of R to the power of N becomes very, very small. Eventually it becomes almost like it's zero. And then on top, you'll have a times one minus zero. So you'll have a times one, and there you have basically a over one minus r, okay? So the reason this formula in green works because our geometric series formula, the r to the power of n 
becomes very, very, very small if r is less than one. All right, let's have a go at using this formula. So all you need to recognize is that we have a geometric series. We can see that the terms are shrinking each time. So all we really need to figure out is what is our A and what is our R, and then we can use our limiting sum formula. So it may not be obvious what 200 is being multiplied by that turns it into 120, and that's fine because we can be clever and we can work backwards. We can do 120 divided by 200 gets us a value of 3 fifths. Okay, so each successive term is being multiplied by 3 out of 5. Because 3 fifths is less than 1, our series is shrinking, and so we have a limiting sum. Our first term is 200, and now we have our formula is a over 1 minus r. So we're going to have 200 over 1 minus 3 fifths. This calculation gets us an answer of 500. So this geometric series will never grow larger than 500. Similar idea for our next one, we have a geometric series and we're trying to find the limiting sum. So once again, all we need is our value of A and our value of R. Once again, it may not be obvious what three quarters is being multiplied by that turns it into negative one half. So let's be clever and work backwards by dividing. So we're gonna do R is equal to negative a half divided by three quarters. This gets us an answer of negative two thirds. Okay, once again, because we have a fractional value of R, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, as long as the fraction is less than one, you are shrinking your series and you will have a limiting sum that you can actually calculate. Okay, so we have our value of A, our first term being three quarters. We have our infinite sum or limiting sum formula once again. A is equal to three quarters, R is equal to minus two thirds. If we substitute these two values into our formula, we get an answer of nine out of 20. So that is the largest possible value of this geometric series. Okay, next couple of questions are using this formula to work both backwards and forwards. So we have a geometric series has an infinite sum of six. So we know A over one minus R is equal to six. If the first term is two, so A is two, find the value of R. All right, we have our infinite sum formula again, or a limiting sum is another way of saying it. We know that A is equal to two, and we know that the infinite sum is equal to six from the question. So we have two over one minus R, is equal to six, and now we are trying to solve this equation to find the value of r. Okay, we can multiply the denominator across to the other side and have two equals six outside of one minus r. Now we can, you can divide both sides by six if you want, or if you prefer, you can expand the right-hand side to get six minus six r. I'm gonna add the six r across the left-hand side and then take away the two from both sides. No matter how you do it, you should get six r equals four. Dividing both sides by six, you should end up with r equals two thirds as the solution of this equation. Okay, so expand, add six r across, minus two, divide by six, and Bob's your uncle. Okay, a bit of a challenging one for our next example. We have the second term of a geometric series is two, and the limiting sum is nine. Find the values of a and r. All right, let's dive in. So our second term is equal to two. So our second term of our geometric series is our first term A multiplied by R. Okay, so here is our second term, first term multiplied by R, this is equal to two. Now question says our limiting sum is nine, so A over one minus R is equal to nine. And now these are the two equations that we are going to try and solve simultaneously to find the values of A and R which is why this is a pretty challenging question because the algebra is pretty demanding. So to solve these two simultaneously, I'm going to use the substitution method, which means I should take the nicer equation, which is the first one, and I should rearrange it. So another way of writing this first equation is A is equal to two over R. Now two over R, I'm going to substitute into the second equation where I see an A. So I'm gonna change the A to a two over R. And now my goal is to solve this equation for R, which is still pretty challenging. All right, I'm going to do this by multiplying the denominator of one minus R across to the right-hand side. Now to get rid of the second fraction, I'm going to multiply both sides by R again. So times by one minus R times by R and I have two equals nine R outside of one minus R and I'm getting very sick of saying R. All right, expanding out the right-hand side, we have nine R minus nine R squared. Putting this all on one side, so we have nine R squared on the left minus nine R on the left and plus two on the left. The reason I've done this is because when you have a quadratic equation, it's always best to set this equal to zero. 
So you can then either try and factorize or you can use your quadratic formula. Uh, if you want to use your quadratic, uh, your quadratic formula, go right ahead. I'm going to do a bit of factorizing just because it makes me feel fancy. So if we factorize this non-monic trinomial, I've sort of skipped the working out here because I'm tired. Uh, we get 3r minus 2 and 3r minus 1. Solving these, we'd have 3r minus 2 equal to 0, which gets us r equal to 2 thirds. For this second bracket, we'd have 3r minus 1 equals 0, which gets us r equals a half when we solve it. Now, excuse me while I do a gross cough. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, now we are also trying to find values of a. So I should take these two values of 2 thirds and 1 half and substitute them back into equation 1, where a is equal to 2 divided by r. So we have a is equal to 2 divided by 2 thirds. This gets us a value of 3 or a is equal to 2 divided by a half, which gets us 4. So there you go, there are two possible scenarios. Either our first term is 3 and our multiplier is 2 thirds, that works for this question, or our first term could be 4 and our multiplier is equal to a half. So because we had a quadratic equation, we got two solutions for both letters, which is why this question is a little bit extra challenging. Okay, up next, I was looking for an HSC question to put in this video as I like to do, and I found this middle question from 2015. And I thought, you know what? We may as well do the question above and below it just for a bit of revision and practice. So hit pause on this video and see how many of these six marks you would be getting in the 2015 exam. Okay, here we go. For the first one, to uh, express with a rational denominator, we need to take the fraction and multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom. So conjugate of 2 plus root 7 is 2 minus root 7. So on the top, 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times root 7 is 8 root 7. On the bottom, using a difference of squares, we have 2 times 2 is 4. Take away root 7 times root 7 is 7. All we can do is write the bottom as minus 3, and you've got your full marks answer. One mark for multiplying by this red object, and then two marks for having your rational denominator. For the second part of the question, finding the limiting sum of the geometric series, all we need to use is our formula from the formula sheet for the limiting sum, which looks like this. We clearly have a value of a being equal to one, and to go from one to negative a quarter, we must be multiplying by negative a quarter. So that is your r value. So one on the top, one minus negative a quarter on the bottom. This gives us a value of four fifths. Okay, cool, so if you've got four fifths, congratulations on your two marks. If you've got the value of r being negative one quarter, that would have got you just one mark. And for the third part of this HSC set, we have differentiate e to the x plus x to the power of five. To do this, we need to differentiate using the chain rule. So we're gonna bring the power down the front, so we have five e to the x plus x to the power of four. Now, when you're doing the chain rule, you need to also multiply by the derivative of what's inside your bracket. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and the derivative of x is one. So we multiply by that, and that gets you your two marks. You can tie it up like this, but the top line above this is going to get you two marks. One mark for knowing to use the chain rule, and another mark for knowing that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay, and to finish off, a more challenging HSC question from the 2016 exam. This is a band five question, and almost every advanced math student I show this to finds it very, very, very confusing. So I'm gonna try and see if I can make it as clear as possible. Okay, by summing the geometric series, one plus x plus x squared plus blah, 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 or otherwise, find the limit as x approaches one of x to the five minus one over x minus one. Okay, now the issue with evaluating this limit is we would love to chuck in the value of x equal to one and see what this is equal to, but we cannot do that because on the bottom, one minus one is zero, and I learned in high school that you can't divide by zero, and I believe that. So we need to figure out another way. Let's uh, do what the question says, and let's sum this geometric series together. We have a geometric series with a first term of one and a multiplier of x. So our value of r is equal to x. Okay, these are the two expressions for the geometric sum on, on our formula sheet. Most of the time we've been using this left one. However, today is one of the rare examples where the right-hand one is more appropriate because it looks more like the target that we're trying to reach. 
So doing the sum of five terms, because our geometric series has five terms, I'm gonna have an A value of one, an R value of X, and a value of N being equal to five. So this is what it looks like when we sum into our geometric series formula. So this tells us that if we added up these five terms, if we did one plus X plus X squared plus X cubed plus X to the four, this should be equal to X to the five minus one over X minus one, because the formula literally just adds together all the terms in the series. Now, the key to this question is that, remember, the goal was to substitute x equals 1 into this expression, but we can't do that because we don't want to divide by 0. So if we can't substitute x equals 1 into the right-hand side, why don't we just chuck it into the left-hand side instead, where we can actually get an answer, okay? That is the key to this question, recognizing that these two sides of this equation are equivalent. We can't substitute x equals 1 into the right-hand side, but we can chuck it into the left-hand side, and we're not going to break any mathematics. Okay, so the limit as x approaches 1 of this fraction is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 squared plus 1 cubed plus 1 to the 4. So you get a final answer of 5 for 2 marks. So there you go, that's why it's a band 5 question, because the link between this left-hand side and right-hand side and applying the limit is um, a pretty scary question. All right, that's it for series. Thank you if you watched this. I hope any of these videos may have been of use to you for this topic and um, maybe see you next year if I can be bothered to make some more. All right, bye for now, maybe forever.